Good evening, America. I'm Scott Binsack, founder of MFA. Thank you for joining me. I know it's late. I wanted to get this video out. Uh, people can watch it in the morning. I want to also announce we're going to be having MFA radio live stream uh, starting, I believe it's tomorrow. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in and spreading and sharing our videos. MFA is growing by hundreds and hundreds a day. I would say even thousands. There's a big question going on out there, uh, as I've been discussing about Jill Stein and her recount movement, uh, which Hillary Clinton has now joined, at least in Wisconsin anyway. She's running into serious trouble in Pennsylvania. I do not think she'll be successful in Pennsylvania. We'll find that out tomorrow by noon. A big question going on is, is this really their agenda? Is this the Stein-Hillary Soros agenda to do the recount, or is it just a distraction from something else? I'm going to be discussing two items tonight. One is the possible distraction. Gotta love those angry faces. The possible distraction, as well as an order for a no-fly zone over Syria, which is a declaration of war with Russia. And how the two of them tie together and what the real agenda is here. Jill Stein is asking for recounts in an effort to nullify the electoral votes of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. That is the question I keep getting asked. Could that be the real plan? America, I say that that will be unsuccessful too. Why? Understand this. Federal law says that presidential recounts must be completed within 35 days after an election. Stein waited to, until 90 minutes before the Wisconsin deadline for filing a recount petition expired. 90 minutes she waited before Wisconsin was ready to expire. Coincidence? Don't think so. All the votes have to be certified by December 13th, according to the report that was out on Friday, which is true if you check the current federal law. The electorals meet on December 19th. That gives them the time that they need to, you know, vote certified. December 19th, they're placed. As we know to date, many electorals have been threatened, have been getting thousands of emails from volunteers, from the Stein Hill recount campaign. Wisconsin is certainly almost guaranteed to miss this deadline. So pay attention now. The reason why I say that from doing research and checking this out, since the last recount took more than a month that Wisconsin did, and that recount was for a state Supreme Court contest where only 1.5 million votes were cast. In this case, we have the whole state and many millions of votes to count, and I know they are working around the clock. Another issue with this is that during the time from election to the time to this recount, there is proof and evidence that the machines in Wisconsin could have been rechipped. There's also evidence coming forward from anonymous sources, whistleblowers, from inside that they were ripping up Republican ballots when there was paper involved. And I'm not saying this is Wisconsin, I'm saying this in other states as well, especially Michigan. In other words, they're ripping up and ditching Republican votes so on the recount they're not counted. And this is coming from reliable sources and some of these stories are breaking on the internet. If Wisconsin misses the December 19th deadline, the electoral votes may not be counted. Now I said the word may. Stein has asked for a hand recount, wonder why, Jill, which will slow the process even further.
as I've discussed in my last two videos, PA, Pennsylvania, I've given you all the strict law in Pennsylvania, everything about Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is probably going nowhere. It's dead in the water. I fully believe it. They got till noon tomorrow. I'm not even worried about Pennsylvania. I'm focusing on Wisconsin now for a reason. And because people keep bringing me this question, and I want to answer it for them because there's some stories on the Internet going on about their, whether they're conspiracy or not or whether they're factual, and I'm going to clear that up for you. And that main question is this. Jill Stein is asking for recounts in an effort... Oh in an effort to nullify the electoral votes of Wisconsin. In other words, if they don't make the deadline, if they don't make the deadline, people are believing that the electoral votes will not go to Donald Trump and thus this could screw up the entire electoral college. Same thing if they do it in other states and they get granted the recounts. So we'll stay if they're successful in Michigan, now they're talking about Ohio, now they're talking about North Carolina. So in other words, this belief on the Internet and the stories that are going around is that, well, hey, uh, you know, we're going to ask for these recounts. They get granted. They wait to the last minute of the deadline, which looks like what they're doing, so that they will suspend the Electoral College vote going, being ready in time for December 19th and thus leaving Donald Trump short of the presidency. If Wisconsin's electoral votes are excluded on December 19th, the state will then have to try and get Congress to include the votes in the January 6th count. According to current standing law, the statewide recount in the presidential election would require a recount of nearly twice as many ballots, about 3 million, and the process would become even more cumbersome if Stein is successful in requiring a recount by hand, and she has, which she has asked for, and which they are doing. If the proposed Wisconsin recount is not completed on time, the state's ten electoral college votes can be rendered void. In that scenario, Trump would be left with 296 electoral college votes, which is still 26 more than 270 needed to win the presidency. But two other states, Michigan and Pennsylvania, where Stein plans to demand a recount could cause even more severe turmoil. This is what's going on and being stated. So the situation is much more worse than actually people think. So you, so people are saying, okay? And I'm going to say that. So people are saying and leading the public to believe. What they're saying is Stein may successfully strip Trump of the electoral votes of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. If so, it'll be up to Congress to decide whether they include the votes or not. Eh, not. Now, I'm not saying Congress wouldn't be up to if that scenario played out. I'm going to tell you why that scenario is not going to play out. Pennsylvania? Highly, highly unlikely. Not. So, that eliminates that situation. So, people are saying this is, this is a big distraction. It's not the votes that they want, it's the electoral college process, and it could be. But their plan is not going to work, and I'm going to explain to you why. This is simply not true. The votes that have already been finalized have already been verified and an official recount has to be made by the deadline. If the recount isn't complete, it is the recount which will not count, not the actual vote. Are we understanding this? The actual vote will count if the deadline is not met. And I'm going to get into legislation of Wisconsin government right now. Okay? The legislation governor of Wisconsin and Michigan, I'm going to give you both, are Republicans. So they will just exercise their constitutional right, and it's their prerogative, uh, and directly certify the election result, and thus the Trump electorals, if the recounts look like they won't be completed in time, and Pennsylvania is likely to incur. So in other words, the governor of Wisconsin can come in and step in and certify the vote himself, and he's a Republican, and stop this in his tracks.
Also, if the Wisconsin legislature has the balls, okay, they can stop this actually right now. Just pass a resolution designating the Trump electoral state as the state's electorals, and it stops this. Per the Supreme Court of Bush versus Gore, it's completely legal. If you remember, Bush versus Gore in 2000, there was a very major lawsuit. Presiding case law under Bush versus Gore clearly states that Wisconsin legislature can stop this right now and pass a simple resolution designating the Trump electoral slate as the state's electorals. More so, the Constitution of the United States actually enumerates to the legislature of each state the authority over the method of choosing electors. So that what that means is it verifies what I just said to you, that the Wisconsin legislature can stop this immediately. While they're opted for popular election, in other words, our voting system is opted per state for popular election, if that cannot be certified in time, they can simply pass the law that certifies the Trump electoral should be should the recounts not be completed on time, the same with Michigan, as both are full GOP controlled states. In other words, and and what I'm trying to say to you is that the Constitution of the United States allows these states, these two states, we got Michigan and Wisconsin I'm talking about right now, which both have Republican governors. Per the case of Bush versus Gore, to do this and stop this entire process. So people worrying about the count not being done on time and holding up electoral college vote really have no standing. So this theory is incorrect because even if I'll give you worst case scenario I'll give you worst case scenario even if the governors don't want to do this and then let it roll over to where the the counting is not done in time it would be left up to Congress and I'm going to tell you now the Republicans own Congress and the Senate. And no, although some of them may not like Donald Trump, they're not going to strip him of his electoral votes to give it back to the Democrats. Not after, under these conditions. So either way, either way, this will not work. And Pennsylvania, as I said, and I've been saying it, and I said it first, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, I'm trying to say that because other people didn't even pick up on the law in Pennsylvania. They panicked. They were all over the place with all kinds of crazy stories. And Pennsylvania shouldn't even be considered in this because it's, a, it's the biggest long shot probably in election history to try to get them to get a recount legally. And you saw Stein today, if you get to watch her video, begging and pleading. Hello, can you please, I need volunteers in 9,150 9, districts. Uh, not... And then they all have to be notarized. You know how many thousands of people that is? And into Harrisburg by 12 noon tomorrow. My prediction is this. If she somehow pulls over, pulls this off with the volunteers running around like chickens without their heads cut off, no matter what you're paying them, I still predict that when they get in there, the Pennsylvania law is going to be clear. They have to show proof of actual voter fraud to get a recount. There's no actual proof in Pennsylvania of any recount. And they have to show a prima facie case. In other words, they have to show some evidence to require every district to recount and not just some computer engineers be going, oh, by the way, we saw some bad algorithms and these guys, by the way, I'm going to be doing a story on them tomorrow. Where do you see what we found out about these alleged computer guys, these computer analysts? I'll give you a heads up. They're being funded by Clinton and Soros. Another bunch of bullshit. Okay? And again, as I said, sorry, I'm reading my notes. Uh, as I said uh, about Pennsylvania, th 
thousands of affidavits have to be signed. She's on there begging today. Not happening. Now, Donald Trump today started making comments and about speaking out about this ridiculous, 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 ridiculous recount where Hillary Clinton was smashing him and smashing him and smashing him about talking about a rigged system. And yes, the system is rigged. Let's be honest, the system is rigged. And I say to you, if Wisconsin's vote comes out in favor of Hillary, then you know it's true that either ballots were destroyed or the machines had, were rechipped. And I'm going to explain something to you. Even the older machines can be rechipped. It's a simple taking one chip out, putting one chip in, screwing the back panel onto the machines on the older machines. And Pennsylvania has the older machines. Wisconsin has similar, not older, older, but within the district of X amount of years. It's a simple chip. It takes X amount of time. However, people would have to get access to these machines, and you're talking about all the different districts. And what they do, just so you know, is they select certain districts randomly to recount when it comes to the electronic systems. In other words, they don't just pick, you know, they randomly start to pick them and see if there's any, any, any irregularities. If there's irregularities, then they'll continue to go on. Um... So, and I also believe that this is also a bigger distraction for several other things that have took, taken place over the past week. And now that I'm going to get to the second part of my show, but before I get into that, I do believe Jill Stein is robbing America. Regardless of it being fed, and there is evidence now coming forward that the IP addresses even though it's from a bot, the IP addresses are coming back, believe this or not, believe this or not, and I'm not going to verify this yet, but I'm, we're in the works of verifying this, that the IP addresses, and even though they're on what they call a random the, the, you know, IP proxy, it's a proxy server, okay, that they're generating from New York and foreign countries. And when I say New York, I'm talking about Chappaqua. I'm talking about Hillary Clinton's residence, where we're into another server area again, as well as foreign countries donating to Jill Stein's large fund, along with sucker American people who want to go along and fund this lady. I wish MFA could have as many people funding us. Holy shit, we'd be owning America. We'd be cleaning out America of every bit of corruption that there is and, 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 and <laughs> having thousands of people on the payroll <laughs> That's, and creating jobs. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We'd be creating tons of jobs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to be... A joke. But if we had that kind of donations, forget it. We could employ so many people. Thousands of people could even be employed here if they just if they kept funding us that way. Um, <laughs> so, uh, point being, this is a whole... There's something much more devious going on with this. And I'm going to say this. I really, really, really do not believe that they're going to be successful in this because I believe it was... Poorly planned, I believe it was a rush to judgment after Trump won. They met with Soros. A lot of things took place. They figured they could start some things. And yes, could it be a distraction to get them to go after the electorals? Yes, but I do not see these other states turning around and saying, wait a second, you know, we're going to rip these electorals away because you didn't get the vote, you didn't get the recount done on time. All right. I mean, the last time that that happened is in the 1800s, just so you know. In the 1800s, and then it went to Congress, Senate and Congress. Now, that would come down to, only then would it come down to if the electorals were, 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 were pulled. And in other words, they would come to some type of either a tie or there was a challenge on both sides. And but, but, but to get there, they have to get through these states on recounts. And Pennsylvania, I'm telling you, it's a far fetch. Michigan, I think, is going to be a far fetch to be granted as well. Uh, 
because they have similar laws in Michigan that Pennsylvania have, and um, I, I just don't see it. So we'll see. Now, I'm going to talk about some very new information that's come out having to do with the media has not covered this at all. And it is very important and is not false news. It is very accurate news. House passes resolution for Syria no-fly zone, which could provoke a war with Russia. That's the title going around, and I'm reading it right off the Internet. Everywhere across the board, I even shared a video of a man on the Internet who has done a good job and is telling the truth uh, about this resolution. And now I'm going to get into it with my own notes. So let me blow them up because I'm blind as a bat even with glasses, just so you all know. <laughs> um, Hillary Clinton's loss was a shock to the purveyors of the U.S. military. And the reason why I say that, and I'm not talking about that, that they, our military didn't stand up and vote for Donald Trump, which they did. Our vets, mainly, majority, 90% of them stood up to vote. However... The hegemony of the, our, 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 our military, meaning these great powers behind this, the generals that, that Obama has put in, would like nothing more with Obama to create war with Russia as another major distraction. And we all know that Hillary Clinton wants, wanted to keep the Syria conflict going. I mean, it, she openly admitted this on her campaign, tra campaign trail. She's openly admitted this. I would go into Syria. I would declare a no-fly zone. Our own general stood up in front of uh, con Congress and Senate and said, listen, you do that, lady. If we do that, we're going to World War III with Russia because Russia owns most of the skies over Syria to protect Bashar al-Assad and their interests as well as Russia's interests there. And the reason why they're protecting Bashar al-Assad is not because he's a a dictator. We all know he's a dictator. But because, I'm going to say this, the Syrian gas scam, and that's what it is, is a false flag scam. Bashar al-Assad did not gas his own people. He did not. And I'll stick my life and my name on that. Because emails clearly prove, and it makes a lot of sense with a lot of other information, that Hillary Clinton took Syrian gas from Libya. Okay, she took gas from Libya, shipped it to Syria, our CIA and others carried out a false flag to make it look like Bashar al-Assad gassed his own people to get us into the conflict in Syria. However, at first, Barack Obama played it off like, we're not going to get involved. We're not going to get involved. That's his own words. After this gassing took place, we're not going to get involved and this is the way... This hypocritical, lying, piece of shit, the way he is, is. If you look back at the press at the time, he's like, no, well, it's horrible what they did, but we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved. By doing that, he psychologically said, you know, wait, I'm against this, even though we set it up. We set up the false flag. Clinton was Secretary of State at the time. Obama was behind this. All of this tied to a pipeline. Okay? All this tied to a major pipeline that needs to go through Syria, which Saudi Arabia is a part of, etc. I'm going to get into the exact details of that in a few minutes. Also to prevent Russia from running a pipeline through Syria. Turkey's involved in this heavily as well. So this no fly zone that Clinton would call, be calling for and wanted has now passed, and I'm going to explain to you where that got brought up. And I'm going to say it in my own words. This is my words, changes. When Bashar al-Assad refused to roll over, regime change became the talking point of Washington think tanks and the mainstream media echo chambers, which I just discussed with you. Clinton promised during her campaign to ramp up action in Syria to the delight of the same neocons who brought the Iraq invasion. 
she acknowledged that many civilians would die if the U.S. set up a no-fly zone. She's actually outright acknowledged this. Yep, they're going to die. This is what we're going to do. Establishment of a no-fly zone is the next cru crucial step toward full-scale war. It would mean Syrian planes could not fly in their own airspace. It would bring the disturb disturbing the, the disturbing prospect of U.S. planes shooting down Russian planes, and we're already in a proxy war with Russia over there anyway, which are operating there on the invitation from Syria to help battle ISIS, which is true. Russia is there to protect its own interests, protect Bashar al-Assad, as well as to go after ISIS. Russia is really the only one going after ISIS. Let's be real. America drops leaflets, drops pamphlets, doesn't really go after ISIS. It goes after Bashar al-Assad's forces using ISIS as a cover to do the same. Fact. Russia's pointed this out and proved this, as well as other countries have done the same. Okay? Soon after the recent presidential election, key warmongers in Congress began formulating plans to make increased conflict a near certainty. In other words, after Donald Trump was elected, the warmongers, there's a lot of them. This is the this is the great industrial complex. This is the great people that like the false flags and like to carry out these acts for other major reasons having to do with greed, money, and power. Bottom line. They wanted to make certain that we would end up in war and get rid of Bashar al-Assad at the same time. Knowing that Russia is right there Doing what they're supposed to do, they have not inf they have not gotten involved with us. They're they're doing what they should be doing, and they are bombing ISIS, and they are protecting Bashar al-Assad's forces. While everyone was distracted by the election of Trump, six representatives took advantage of the lame duck session. Okay, lame duck sessions are simple. Uh, that's mean like basically nobody's there. Uh, the six representatives took advantage of the lame duck session and suspended normal rules to get these this, these passed. They suspended normal rules to bring us HR five seven three two. What is HR five seven three two? It is the real, the real, the real. Thing going on right now while all these major distractions going on. That's what HR 5732 is. And I believe it's the last stand of Obama. That's what I think. And I think Russia believes that too. And that's why Russia has moved into place a very serious arsenal of weapons in the Mediterranean Sea a full arm Amada, aircraft carriers, they brought in their best, and they do have the best surface-to-air missile system, defense system in the world. The SR-400, through this, the 300, which is older, the SR-400, SR-500 now actually as well. The Cesar Syrian Civilian Protection Act of 2016 includes Section 303, titled, Assessment of Potential Effectiveness of and requirements for the establishment of safe zones or no-fly zones in Syria under Section HR 5732. Now I'm going to tell you, late in the day on November 15th, one week after the U.S. elections, the lame duck Congress convened in special session with normal rules suspended, normal rules were suspended, so the House could pass House Resolution 5732 the Cesar Syrian Civilian Protection Act, calling for intensifying the already harsh sanctions on Syria, assessing the imposition of a no-fly zone inside Syria to prevent, i.e., to prevent the Syrian government from flying, i.e., and Russia, which is protecting Syria, and they own the skies, and they have their own no-fly zone set up. And here it is and escalating the efforts to press criminal charges against Syrian officials. Just happened November 15th. Most strikingly, the resolution calls for evaluating and developing plans for the United States to impose a no-fly zone inside of Syria, a sovereign nation, 
and an act of war that also would violate international law as an act of aggression. It could also put the U.S. military in the position of shooting down Russian aircraft and thus would be a declaration of World War III with Russia. War with Russia is World War III. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It's not just a declaration of war with Russia. Okay? And don't kid yourself. Russia can shoot down planes at 30,000 feet. 30,000, 33, 34, that's where commercial airliners fly that high. We don't have that, I'm sorry to tell you. We do not, and that's mobile capability. Okay, we have the capability in a different way, but they have it mobily. That's the SR-400 system. Now I'm going to talk to you about what they did here because they again violated the law with passing this. And this is how they operate right now, and this is why the swamp must be drained. The suspension of rules procedure is supposed to be used for what non-controversial bills such as naming post offices. <laughs> I'm giving you an example. That's what this procedure is supposed to be used for. Okay, this lame duck. This this whole procedure is to like name post offices, do other types of congressional acts that have nothing to do with national security. Uh, but this small group of lawmakers used it to pass a drastically important bill while no one was looking and everyone else has been paying attention to other shit, like the election, like a recount, like the Clinton stories, like the riots. And if we look at November 15th date, we're talking about a lot of rioting going on then and a lot of shit happening and the news was just covering that. This was not in the news media at all. Why is that? The blatant abuse of power shows the desperation of the neocon ranks within our Congress. These are the true traitors. These are the Obamanites. The Obamaites. The Obamanites. Obamanites. Good word. Obamanites. No such word, but sounds good, right? Makes sense. They're like Nazis. Obamanites. This is a complete abuse of power. While everybody wasn't looking, this is what really what was happening. To the point, this is not a coincidence. So you know how they're going to play this off? Is the press maybe possibly picks up on this? Well, you know, you know, why would you need this close to you? Obama's leaving the White House, supposedly, supposed to leave the White House. On his way out, congressmen get together, get this bill together. excuse me, Senate, gets this bill together, abuses their power, they use a section, a session that's supposed to be used to like pass post office laws, you know, non-violent stuff, different stuff that has to do with the federal government. I'm using the post office as an example because that's what they use as an example as for what one of the main leading things are. Why would you even, it's a lame, it's called lame duck. Um, now, Trump has spoken out against regime change in Syria. In other words, he stakes the stance with Russia, which I would too. You wonder why? We don't belong over there anyway. Syria wants to run a pipeline through its country and let other countries do it and pay for it. That's on their, That's on them. Not on us. It's up to them. But we don't like that, you see. We want to like say, listen, you're going to do what we tell you to do or we're going to come in and what we did. Wreak havoc on you. And now they want to put a no-fly zone, which is World War III. Because I can assure you, as Putin has told the world, if the United States declares a no-fly zone over Syria, or touches any, or Russia's already stated, after it's already come into conflict with Turkey, and even our own planes, if you fly over this area of Syria, or and or try to complete a no-fly zone, we are going to shoot you down. And they have their nuclear submarines in place, they have their aircraft carriers in place, they have their anti-aircraft systems in place. Putin has even moved his nuclear missiles all over the place. He even has an armor model, which most of you don't know, and it's kind of funny, Fidel Castro just died, right? Bye, asshole. Pack your shit. Okay? You'll be seen in hell. End of story. And there's Obama about him. Not to get off topic, but then there's Obama about 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 uh, uh, 
Fidel Castro. Oh, my condolences to the family and this and that. This guy's one of the biggest dictators in the world. He oppressed his people for like generations and generations. And thanks to Kennedy, we didn't end up in World War III. But what else do you know, America? And you can check out what I'm telling you. And if you do your homework, you'll see I'm right. Russia moved in its another arma mater right off our coast, and it didn't make the media. I busted this story three weeks ago. Russia's moved in some heavy-duty equipment, submarines, ships, etc., right off our coast, right in right by Cuba, because their next plan is. If the United States keeps up his shit, and if Hillary Clinton were to get into power, if she were to get into power, the plan was to protect themselves because Hillary Clinton was going to basically go to World War III with the Russians, with this no-fly zone situation, as well as what's happening in Crimea. With the United Nations backing her. Fact. So Russia's moved in its quick right off our coast. We have nuclear missiles in submarines and in ships via cruise missiles, right as you know right now, right off our coast of Florida and in the Atlantic, right there. Fact. So unlike the Bay of Pigs and unlike Cuba, they don't need a base in Cuba anymore to launch missiles or cruise missiles. They can launch them right from their ships and or submarines, which they have been proving in lighting up Syria, Syria and ISIS on a daily basis to say to America, listen, you don't think we can do this? You don't think we have the technology to do this? You don't think we have the balls to do this? Well, they've been launching off more shit than you would imagine. Just to say, listen, Obama, you ever seen the look on Putin and Obama's face when they see each other? It says it all. Obama just had a meeting with them. Not a meeting. He had a handshake with him. Did you see the look? Putin's like, you're a piece of shit, my man. For real? Putin does not want World War III. Unlike the globalists of Obama and the New World Order pushers, Hillary Clinton and the above, we do want World War III. And it's by God's mercy, I'm telling you this right now, that that woman has not gotten in there. And I'm, I'm telling you now, she's not going to get in with this bullshit she's trying to pull down. Is it something to be concerned about what they're doing right now? Yes. Can we allow it to happen? No. If you see certain things happen, well, then we different action must be taken. Now, little concerns here. Now, I'm going to go over some stuff with you. Donald Trump is fully against the regime change, but considering his unpredictable behavior, as they're saying, the actual position of his coming administration is anybody's guess on how it will be with Syria. However, I fully believe that Donald Trump will be do very well with Putin. They've already talked on the phone. They've already gotten together, etc. But Lieutenant General Michael Flynn... I know General Flynn, he was going to, we had to try to get him to speak in D.C. for us, but he's very busy on the Trump campaign, and he couldn't speak for us in D.C. Uh, he's now his national security advisor, is a little rough when it comes to this situation. Look that. Just, look what just came up on the board screen behind me. Okay, and I'm going to get into Israel in a second. Israel just killed ISIS, allegedly. ISIS members on its border coming into attack. That's Israel, by the way. Do you see the nice big wall and fence that they have around Israel? Do you see that? Big fences, electronic fences that they have, big walls around Israel. It works. The wall works. And I'm very close to the Israeli news TV, the number one channel news station there. We've become very good friends since the D.C. March. They did an incredible international news article about us. They filmed the entire D.C. March. And I've gotten to know this. And Israel's nobody to mess around with. I'm telling you right now. However, however, and they have a wall, a big wall and lots of fences. Serious fences. And this is what they do when you try to, you, 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 you come close to Israel, you come close to their border, they blow you up. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you right to right. They blow you up. Okay, pack your shit. Have a nice day. I don't care who you are. Look at them. These guys in pickup trucks are trying to fire into Israel. They're just like, listen, come here, asshole. <clears throat> Have a nice day. Pack your shit. Yes, Israel killed four ISIS members. However, however, that's what they're being called, that's what they're being said, and there's more to this, because I'm going to get into that. So please, listen to what I'm saying to you. Now, 
There's more to this. It may not be a coincidence that just days ago as well, Turkey, a NATO ally, urged the U.S. to move forward with a no-fly zone over Syria. So now Turkey, just a couple days ago, after this resolution, H.R. 5732 has been passed for a no-fly zone, i.e. a declaration of war, Turkey just urged the United States, you can check it out, Google it, fact check me, as Hillary says, fact check me, urged the U.S. to move forward with a no-fly zone in Syria. Why is that? Well, incidentally, no one seems to have paid attention to a damning investigation report finding that the Turkish government under President Erdogan, Erdogan, how you want to pronounce his name? Erdogan is covertly providing direct military, and I said this two weeks ago, financial and logistic support to ISIS even while claiming to fight the terror network. The United States, Turkey, Saudi Arabia are funding ISIS and providing logistic support, military equipment, and hardware. And how they do that is very simple. We sell a lot of military equipment to the wonderful, wonderful, evil empire of Saudi Arabia, who treats it as its record of human rights is horrible against women and others. And that's Hillary's best friend, by the way. Obama and Hillary's best friend. I did a very big story about this. I mean, you're talking about they're such good friends, they might even be related. Okay? The Pentagon nurtured the selfist sect in eastern Syria to help the U.S. and its allies achieve regime change. In fact, i.e., that's Turkey. And these extremists went on to become the violent terror group known, known as ISIS. The Salafist sect, okay, in eastern Syria, they were nobodies. They were guerrillas, okay? That's what you want to call them. They were guerrillas. We, we got them together, paid them, decided to call them ISIS because the word Al-Qaeda has gotten old and out of the media. So we need to call them something else. So let's come up with a new name. Now they're ISIS or ISIL. These extremists went on to become that violent group. In order to keep the American public ignorant of the reality in Syria and to maintain the specter of terrorism in order to justify massive military spending... Politicians and mass media in the United States, propaganda must be so complete that they believe it themselves. And this is what you've seen go on now for years. Nothing but sellout propaganda to cover up the real truth that we are behind ISIS with Turkey and Saudi Arabia and this is what Putin is fighting against. And now we have a declaration under H.R. 5732 to declare the no-fly zone. And Turkey, and i.e., thus, the U.N., is pushing for us to have a no-fly zone over Syria. And what is that? The biggest mistake that's worse than the Iran deal. That's worse than having the Iran deal, which Donald Trump should rip up as soon as he gets in there. If I was Donald Trump, I'd get I'd call a news conference on the White House lawn. Kid you not. I'd get a burning barrel out there and I'd get them to throw logs in there. I'd get a good fire cooking up on the White House lawn. And right in front of America, I would take first the Obamacare 33,000 page bill and take it, pay, just throw it in there and burn it. And sign it. Bye. And then the next thing, The next thing they need to throw in is the Iranian Iranian deal. Also done without congressional approval. As such, Donald Trump can come in, sign it, and throw it in the barrel and burn it too. Along with several other of Obama's traitoristic bills and laws not, not approved by Congress.
Now, in order to keep the American public ignorant, our media, and then ignorant of the reality of Syria, and to maintain the specter of terrorism, because we always have to have a bad guy, so pay attention. No bad guy, no money, no funding. They can't cover up what they're doing, because the American people and the world won't take it. So you got to have a bad guy. It's like Osama bin Laden. you got to have a bad guy. No bad guy. you got to have the bad guy. Every good movie has a bad guy. To, so to maintain the specter of terrorism in order to justify massive military spending, massive military spending, politicians' propaganda must be so complete they believe it themselves, as I said. This was demonstrated during the 40-minute debate session among six lawmakers who pushed the bill through. Only six lawmakers it took to push this through. They claim that Obama administration has been sitting back and doing nothing as violence worsens and Assad is killing millions of its citizens all of this time. Of course, this is 100%, 1,000% false. Assad is not killing millions of its citizens. We have killed millions of Syrian citizens. And yes, Russia, you're going to have the fallout of going after ISIS of citizens ca citizen casualties. It's a fact of war. We, on the other hand, drop leaflets and protect ISIS and say, by the way, in your oil convoy, go legal oil convoy, convoy going to Turkey, we're going to let you know that we're coming and it's proven they let them know 15 minutes before. By the way, we're bombing in 15 minutes. Leave your vehicles so you're safe. What? What? Let's tell the terrorists that we created no less, thus why we're warning them, to get out of their vehicles so that we can't, we can bomb them so that they're safe, so they can come back tomorrow with some more oil tankers that we've provided them, as Turkey's provided them, to take more oil and, on the black market and rip it off from Syria and bring it into Turkey, which Turkey's president and his son are behind completely making millions and probably actually billions of dollars in illegal oil trade, which is also funding ISIS. So let's see, we have allowed to create this incredible, incredibly evil, ISIS, which goes around beheading Christians. Mass graves have just been uncovered of the massive slaughter of not just Christians, but good Muslims, as well as Jews and anybody else that gets in their way. I know that's hard to imagine in America, but now we have a bill that's been pushed through by six morons, no mainstream media, that allows a no-fly zone in Syria while no one's looking. So now what you're going to see, you're going to see something come up that says, well, something big will happen in Syria. And now all of a sudden we have right on the border with Israel for ISIS, alleged ISIS, I'm saying alleged ISIS, terrorist killed, and now watch, you're going to see something else big happen over there in the next couple of days. Walk more by my word. Or within the next week or so because of where it is. And then we're going to demand, like Turkey's already demanding, we're going to say we got to put a no-fly zone in, and thus that means we're going to have to go to war with Russia. If they go to that extreme, we're deep shit. Before November, January 20th. And these people are that psycho and that desperate because they're busted apart. This entire globalization plan, entire Democratic Party, this entire New World Order, Everything that they have has come to a screeching halt and is busted in pieces because of the election of Donald Trump and not Hillary Clinton, the puppet. Obama's a puppet. Hillary was going to be the last puppet. Trust me, they were going to use that bitch. They were going to use her to incite World War III and enact the rest of this globalization plan Now it's even coming out that they're pushing for massive, continued, more massive refugees to be spread into other countries as we speak, and it's behind Soros and the NATO initiative to do the same. Now I'm going to get into some detail to prove to you that the CIA and we are behind ISIS, which most people don't get into on their shows, but I'm going to explain it to you. 
By late 2011, the U.S. was actively coordinating, training, and supplying armed opposition groups when Muammar Gaddafi of Libya, now we know who this is, right? Clinton's great friend that she murdered, was toppled in the fall of 2011. The CIA oversaw the division, excuse me, the diversion of Libyan weapons to the Syrian armed opposition, i.e., that's where the gas came from, like I told you, as documented in the Defense Intelligence Agency report of October 2012. And I have a copy of the report up here from 2012. These weapons transfers were secret. They were not known to the American public. For the public record, it was acknowledged that the U.S. was supplying communications equipment to the armed opposition while U.S. allies, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, another great friend, were supplying the weaponry, as I just said. This is one reason that Saudi purchases of weapons skyrocketed during this time period. And if you check the records of U.S. weapons sales to Saudi Arabia, it's extremely high during that time period and for specific items that could be used by ISIS. They were buying weapons to replace those being shipped to the armed opposition in Syria. It was very profitable for the U.S. arms manufacturers, and we know who they're tied to, Huge weapons transfers to the armed opposition in Syria have continued to the present time, including that of under that of heavily under the Secretary of State Clinton and Kerry, with the U.S. government even more directly involved. This past spring, James Defense reported the details of a U.S. delivery of 2.2 million pounds of ammunition. 2.2 million pounds of ammunition rocket launchers, which ISIS uses regularly, and other weaponry to the armed opposition. So the political claims that the U.S. has been inactive or, 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 or baseless by these six lawmakers, in reality the U.S. has done everything short of a direct attack on Syria and the U.S. military is starting to cross that line as we speak and has been going on for months now. On September 17th, the U.S. Air Coalition conducted a series of airstrikes on the Syrian army in Deir Azor, killing this, if you remember, this is the one they said, oops, just recently in September, killing 80 Syrian special forces, soldiers, and enabling ISIS to launch an attack on that position. Claims that it was a mistake are highly dubious, and Russia supports the fact that there was no mistake, and Australia... Australian pilots were involved in this, and I don't blame the Australian pilots because they did not know. They were going off the orders of the U.S., and Russia has even backed this up with their reports. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights estimates to date that the actual death toll killed pro-Syrian forces at 108,000, killed anti-government forces 105,000, killed civilians 89 to 100,000, roughly all collectively 300 some odd thousand. Some of them are saying even higher than that now. Almost a half a million they're claiming. In no way am I trying to downplay okay, uh, the significant significance of the horrible deaths at these, at these, these warring forces. I'm not. But it's extremely important to point out, point out the highly exaggerated claims of the U.S. politicians in their push to bring even more death and destruction to Syria, including that of what Hillary Clinton would want to, would have been doing as we speak, as presidential-elect, with Obama. The Friends Committee for National Legislation analyzed House Resolution 5732 and found it would make a peace agreement not only more difficult, but impossible to have a peace agreement, and they just passed this law November 17th. Any peace agreement that leaves Bashar al-Assad in power would be seen as a failure for the United States, and hence why we're in a, and against our foreign policy. Thus why we're in a current proxy war with Russia as we speak now. It would also be seen as a victory for Russia which is helping, as I said, Assad fight ISIS and U.S.-funded moderate rebels in the area attempting to overthrow Assad. 
Putin's not going to allow anyone to overthrow Assad. Even the title of the resolution, okay, under under 5732, says it all. Cesar Syrian Civil Protection Act. How is it going to be a civilian protection act? Because the U.S. is going to come in and say, we're going to protect you, Syria, and put a no-fly zone over your country, and what are we going to do? Declare war with Russia? And why? Turkey can't stand Russia. Okay? They were almost, we were almost at World War III with Turkey a few months ago when they shot down one of Russian's planes for no fucking reason, and it was a shot down with using, actually, a U.S. missile. Shoulder launched. And then they put the pilots, as they were parachuting out, in peaceful terms, okay? Even it's wartime, you're not allowed to shoot a pilot when he comes down out of parachute in even enemy territory. They, shot, they were shooting this, these pilots with machine guns in the air coming down. There's clear video of it, and Russia's come out against it, and that's when Russia stepped up and armed all of its planes. These planes were unarmed, by the way. These were unarmed aircraft. I'm telling you all this because to show you the sickness of this grandiosity of this plan by these globalists. They stop at nothing, and they will stop at nothing to get what they want. And that's what America needs to realize, that you have been, you have been bullshitted. You have been bullshitted for a very long time by our government, our media, and even other world powers tied there too. You, it's complete bullshit. Look over here. Well, what's really going on is over there, and guess who's paying for it? All American taxpayers are paying for this shit. So get this in your head, America. When you see ISIS and they're holding up a Christian's head, and they beheaded them, we funded that. We created that. That's the real truth. Understand this. And that's what needs to be stopped because their little war games involve innocent civilians not just in our country and our tax paying hard working dollars but it involves innocent civilians and others and Christians Judea, Jews good Muslims across the planet to play the sick globalization new world order games and that's what it is to them a big fucking game just like you see what's going on in the United States right now. Paid riots, paid violence, Black Lives Matter in Chicago the other day, all of this. This is, this is their sick game. And until Americans wake up as a whole and unify, we need to unify in this country. Not be divided. I don't care about Democrats, liberals, Republicans. Americans need to wake up across the board and truly see that this is like living in the matrix because really that's what it is because what you see there and what you're being shown and told is bullshit and yet people have the internet at their disposal to really find out the truth and many could care less but yet they'll go to work and work three jobs and have their taxes taken out right be robbed by the government of the taxes because the tax rates and corporations in this country why they're leaving tax rates too high but all this money all this money is going to fund this madness. To fund terrorism. And WikiLeaks brought out the truth of that even more. And Secretary of State Clinton at the time should be tried for war crimes and hung just like Saddam Hussein was tried. And you know what? We created Saddam Hussein too. And when we didn't need him anymore, you see, the CIA threw him away. He was no longer our patsy that we needed. He defended Iran for us, who's the real, who Iran is the real, real, real problem here. We are now funding Iran by giving this Iranian deals the worst deal in the history of the world and making them rich as we speak by the billions and billions of dollars and even paid a ransom for four of our soldiers that were over there and conveniently unmarked bills, unmarked things. Oh, that's not a ransom. No, nah, not at all. At the same time Americans get on the plane, the sol poor soldiers get on the plane, we drop the money. It's a part of an alleged deal we have to pay back Iran. Who are you stroking, Obama? Who are you really stroking? Because you're not stroking me, and you're not stroking many other Americans. And the rest of you that believe this, you really need to examine your head. And you need to examine the facts. 
And I'm sorry to tell you how it is, but you do. Because right before your eyes, you're working hard to fund this. That's the funny thing. And you don't care, or you don't want to believe it. But you really are. You're not funding your kid's future. You're not funding, you know, you're not, you're not funding great programs or infrastructure in the United States to make the United States better. You're funding this madness. And you're funding terrorism and open borders and nutcases running all over this, all over the country. ISIS is now in 30 some odd countries. All at the hands of the plan of the United States and globalists to do this. And now we have the no-fly zone ready to go to create World War III. And Putin's ready. While Putin's ready, while everybody was paying all this, and I said, I did a video two months ago, World War III, we're on the brink. No one was paying attention. Now what? Yes, Obama's endgame. Now, one pe thing that people do not know, and everybody knows, I'm a very big follower and, and, and found I'm very fond of Israel. However, unsurprisingly, the Israeli lobby is campaigning for the passage of H.R. 5732 through its final passages. Why? As Israel has officially been at war with Syria, and continues to illegally occupy the Syrian Golan Heights. Do you know, that's kind of funny, I had this as written before Fox News came on. Syrian Golan Heights is where these alleged ISIS soldiers, uh, these alleged ISIS terrorists just got killed. No coincidence. And they're occupying this area. Thus, removing Assad would make things much easier for Israel to permanently seize the fossil fuel rich area and would strike a blow to its perceived enemies in Lebanon and Iran. That's why Israel wants the Syrian Golan Heights area. Fact. And this is nothing against my, my Jewish friends or, or whatever. But this is what the Israeli government is doing, as is Mossad, which Mossad is their CIA. They work very close with our CIA. And as a matter of fact, there's a little story that's been floating around that no one paid attention to, but I did bring it up several weeks ago when it happened. Uh, maybe more than that, I'm sorry, maybe a month and change ago. Russia bombed a specific location in Syria where it found inside Syrian territory that they hold a secret compound, okay, a secret underground compound where RCIA and Israel's Mossad was, was operating out of. And you can Google what I'm telling you. You'll find pieces of this story accurate out there. Russia bombed it because they are the ones going after Assad to get rid of Assad. And they've been working with ISIS and other rebel groups to do this. Despite these grave ramifications of HR 5732, the media is completely silent. The media outlets now professing to hold the monopoly of real journalism have not said a word about the shocking abuse of suspended rules in the House, which was elite. They, they suspended the rules in the House to pass this legislation. Not one word of this. No one's speaking out about it. And the utter propaganda being spewed out by lawmakers to save their crusade, crusade regime, regime change in Syria, which is Obama, even if it means world War three. Understand this, America. Good night and God bless. This is serious end game. Pay attention. Thank you all for your support. Please like and share. I have two very special stories coming out tomorrow. And don't worry about this recount, okay? You're going to see some things change tomorrow, I believe. We'll see. Good night. God bless. Love you guys, and thank you for all your support. The state will then have to try and get Congress to include the votes in the January 6th count.
according to current standing law. The statewide recount in the presidential election would require a recount of nearly twice as many ballots, about 3 million, and the process would become even more cumbersome if Stein is successful in requiring a recount by hand, and she has, which she has asked for and which they are doing. If the proposed Wisconsin recount is not completed on time, the state's 10 electoral college votes can be rendered void. In that scenario, Trump would be left with 296 electoral college votes, which is still 26 more than 270 needed to win the presidency. But two other states, Michigan and Pennsylvania, where Stein plans to demand a recount could cause even more severe turmoil. This is what's going on and being stated. So the situation is much more worse than actually people think. So you, so people are saying, okay? And I'm going to say that. So people are saying and leading the public to believe. What they're saying is Stein may successfully strip Trump of the electoral votes of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. If so, it'll be up to Congress to decide whether they include the votes or not. Eh, not. Now. I'm not saying Congress wouldn't be up to if that scenario played out. I'm going to tell you why that scenario is not going to play out. Pennsylvania, highly, highly unlikely. Not. So that eliminates that situation. So people are saying this is this is a big distraction. It's not the votes that they want. It's the electoral college process. And it could be. But their plan is not going to work, and I'm going to explain to you why. This is simply not true. The votes that have already been finalized have already been verified and an official recount has to be made by the deadline. If the recount isn't complete, it is the recount which will not count, not the actual vote. Are we understanding this? The actual vote will count if the deadline is not met. And I'm going to get into legislation of Wisconsin government right now. Okay. The legislature and governor of Wisconsin and Michigan, I'm going to give you both, are Republicans. So they will just exercise their constitutional right, and it's their prerogative, uh, and directly certify the election result, and thus the Trump electorals, if the recounts look like they won't be completed in time, and Pennsylvania is likely to incur. So in other words, the governor of Wisconsin can come in and step in and certify the vote himself, and he's a Republican, and stop this in his tracks. Also, if the Wisconsin legislature has the balls, okay, they can stop this actually right now. Just pass a resolution designating the Trump electoral state as the state's electorals, and it stops this. Per the Supreme Court of Bush versus Gore, it's completely legal. If you remember, Bush versus Gore in 2000, there was a very major lawsuit. Presiding case law under Bush versus Gore clearly states that. Wisconsin legislature can stop this right now and pass a simple resolution designating the Trump electoral slate as the state's electorals. More so, the Constitution of the United States actually enumerates to the legislature of each state the authority over the method of choosing electors. So that what that means is it verifies what I just said to you, that the Wisconsin legislature can stop this immediately. While they're opted for popular election, in other words, our voting system is opted per state for popular election. If that cannot be certified in time, they can simply pass a law that certifies the Trump electoral should be should the recounts not be completed on time, the same with Michigan, as both are full GOP controlled states. In other words, and and what I'm trying to say to you is that the Constitution of the United States allows these states, these two states, we got Michigan and Wisconsin I'm talking about right now, which both have Republican governors. Per the case of Bush versus Gore, to do this and stop this entire process. So people worrying about the count not being done on time and holding up electoral 
college vote really have no standing. So this theory is incorrect because even if, I'll give you worst case scenario, I'll give you worst case scenario, even if the governors don't want to do this and then let it roll over to where the, the counting is not done in time, it would be left up to Congress. And I'm going to tell you now, the Republicans own Congress and the Senate. And no, although some of them may not like Donald Trump, they're not going to strip him of his electoral votes to give it back to the Democrats. Not after, under these conditions. So either way, either way, this will not work. And Pennsylvania, as I said, and I've been saying it, and I said it first, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, I'm trying to say that because other people didn't even pick up on the law in Pennsylvania. They panicked. They were all over the place with all kinds of crazy stories. And Pennsylvania shouldn't even be considered in this because it's a it's the biggest long shot probably in election history to try to get them to get a recount legally. And you saw Stein today, if you get to watch her video, begging and pleading. Hello, can you please, I need volunteers in 9,150 9, districts. Uh, not... And then they all have to be notarized. You know how many thousands of people that is? And into Harrisburg by 12 noon tomorrow. My prediction is this. If she somehow pulls over, pulls this off with the volunteers running around like chickens without their heads cut off, no matter what you're paying them, I still predict that when they get in there, the Pennsylvania law is going to be clear. They have to show proof of actual voter fraud to get a recount. There's no actual proof in Pennsylvania of any recount. Of, and they have to show a prima facie case. In other words, they have to show some evidence to require every district to recount and not just some computer engineers be going, oh, by the way, we saw some bad algorithms. And these guys, by the way, I'm going to be doing a story on them tomorrow. Where do you see what we found out about these alleged computer guys, these computer analysts? I'll give you a heads up. They're being funded by Clinton and Soros. Another bunch of bullshit. Okay? And again, as I said, sorry, I'm reading my notes. Uh, as I said uh, about Pennsylvania, thousands of affidavits have to be signed. She's on there begging today. Not happening. Now, for Donald Trump today started making comments and about speaking out about this ridiculous, 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 ridiculous recount where Hillary Clinton was smashing him and smashing him and smashing him about talking about a rigged system. And yes, the system is rigged. Let's be honest, the system is rigged. And I say to you, if Wisconsin's vote comes out in favor of Hillary, then you know it's true that either ballots were destroyed or the machines had, were rechipped. And I'm going to explain something to you. Even the older machines can be rechipped. It's a simple taking one chip out, putting one chip in, screwing the back panel onto the machines on the older machines. And Pennsylvania has the older machines. Wisconsin has similar, not older, older, but within the district of X amount of years. It's a simple chip. It takes X amount of time. However, people would have to get access to these machines, and you're talking about all the different districts. And what they do, just so you know, is they select certain districts randomly to recount when it comes to the electronic systems. In other words, they don't just pick, you know, they randomly start to pick them and see if there's any 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 irregularities. If there's irregularities, then they'll continue to go on. Um, so, and I also believe that this is also a bigger distraction for several other things that have took, taken place over the past week. And now that I'm going to get to the second part of my show. Good evening, America. I'm Scott Binsack, founder of MFA. Thank you for joining me. 
I know it's late. I wanted to get this video out. Uh, people can watch it in the morning. I want to also announce we're going to be having MFA radio live stream uh, starting, I believe it's tomorrow. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in and spreading and sharing our videos. MFA is growing by hundreds and hundreds a day. I would say even thousands. There's a big question going on out there, uh, as I've been discussing about Jill Stein and her recount movement, uh, which Hillary Clinton has now joined, at least in Wisconsin anyway. She's running into serious trouble in Pennsylvania. I do not think she'll be successful in Pennsylvania. We'll find that out tomorrow by noon. A big question going on is, is this really their agenda? Is this the Stein-Hillary Soros agenda to do the recount, or is it just a distraction from something else? I'm going to be discussing two items tonight. One is the possible distraction. Got to love those angry faces. The possible distraction, as well as an order for a no-fly zone over Syria, which is a declaration of war with Russia. And how the two of them tie together and what the real agenda is here. Jill Stein is asking for recounts in an effort to nullify the electoral votes of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. That is the question I keep getting asked. Could that be the real plan? America, I say that that will be unsuccessful too. Why? Understand this. Federal law says that presidential recounts must be completed within 35 days after an election. Stein waited to, until 90 minutes before the Wisconsin deadline for filing a recount petition expired. 90 minutes she waited before Wisconsin was ready to expire. Coincidence? Don't think so. All the votes have to be certified by December 13th, according to the report that was out on Friday, which is true if you check the current federal law. The electorals meet on December 19th. That gives them the time that they need to, you know, vote certified. December 19th, they're placed. As we know to date, many electorals have been threatened, have been getting thousands of emails from volunteers from the Stein Hill recount campaign. Wisconsin is certainly almost guaranteed to miss this deadline. So pay attention now. The reason why I say that from doing research and checking this out, since the last recount took more than a month that Wisconsin did, and that recount was for a state Supreme Court contest where only 1.5 million votes were cast. In this case, we have the whole state and many millions of votes to count, and I know they are working around the clock. Another issue with this is that during the time from election to the time to this recount, there is proof and evidence that the machines in Wisconsin could have been rechipped. There's also evidence coming forward from anonymous sources, whistleblowers, from inside that they were ripping up Republican ballots when there was paper involved. And I'm not saying this is Wisconsin, I'm saying this in other states as well, especially Michigan. In other words, they're ripping up and ditching Republican votes, so on the recount, they're not counted. And this is coming from reliable sources, and some of these stories are breaking on the Internet. If Wisconsin misses the December 19th deadline, the electoral votes may not be counted. Now, I said the word may. Stein has asked for a hand recount. Wonder why, Jill. Which will slow the process even further. As I've discussed in my last two videos, PA, Pennsylvania, I've given you all the strict law in Pennsylvania, everything about Pennsylvania, 
Pennsylvania is probably going nowhere. It's dead in the water. I fully believe it. They got till noon tomorrow. I'm not even worried about Pennsylvania. I'm focusing on Wisconsin now for a reason. And because people keep bringing me this question, and I want to answer it for them because there's some stories on the Internet going on about their, whether they're conspiracy or not or whether they're factual, and I'm going to clear that up for you. And that main question is this. Jill Stein is asking for recounts in an effort... Oh, in an effort to nullify the electoral votes of Wisconsin. In other words, if they don't make the deadline, if they don't make the deadline, people are believing that the electoral votes will not go to Donald Trump and thus this could screw up the entire electoral college. Same thing if they do it in other states and they get granted the recounts. So we'll stay if they're successful in Michigan, now they're talking about Ohio, now they're talking about North Carolina. So in other words, this belief on the internet and the stories that are going around is that, well, hey, uh, you know, we're going to ask for these recounts. They get granted. They wait to the last minute of the deadline, which looks like what they're doing, so that they will suspend the Electoral College vote going, being ready in time for December 19th and thus leaving Donald Trump short of the presidency. If Wisconsin's electoral votes are excluded on December 19th, 